Okay guys, I think you know what this is. This is a flat panel television. This is the almighty Samsung television. LCD, 46 inch. Nice television. For years this was the one that was rumored to be the same as the Sony Bravia. It is in fact not the same television as the Sony Bravia, despite what people will say. Uh, yes, Samsung did make parts for Sony, namely their liquid crystal displays, but Sony built their own electronics. And all one has to do is look at the back panel, and you can see the difference. The input output panel is totally different. Sony, for example, has four HDMI inputs, only has one antenna input on their televisions of the same generation. Um, but this one's symptom is the classic takes forever to turn on. Started out taking 10 seconds to turn on, 20 seconds, minute. Now it barely will turn on at all, if at all. So we know what the problem is on this. It's the power supply, and we're going to tear this thing down, and we're going to fix the power supply and show you how to do it. Now one thing you might notice is that I've got a jacket underneath the TV here. Well, that's just to prevent the screen from being scratched. This is a paying customer's uh, set, so I don't want to... Um, damage it in any way but we're just going to remove the back off of this television and then I'm going to show you the power supply uh, the power supply is where the problem is going to be on this is a very common problem on the Samsung's there's going to be several filter capacitors that have gone bad and we're going to change the affected ones and measure them with an ESR meter so we know which ones are indeed bad and uh, change them all with high quality um, Panasonic gold caps which are the industry standard in high quality uh, condensers and uh, so the first things first is we're going to pull the back off this set. Now take the back off a set like this, you have to remove all the screws that are... Now they don't mark their screws, some companies mark them with like an X or an arrow or something. But all these screws around the edges here all have to be done. The ones marked with an S, well those are to hook the stand up, so there will be no screws in those. But all these screws marked with an arrow and all the screws around the perimeter have to come off in order to remove the back here, so we're going to do that and uh, then we'll proceed. This device is called a screwdriver magnetizer. It's great for uh, removing screws that are magnetic. And um, I don't even know where this thing came from. I just know that I've had it for probably 30 or so years from when I was in the service business and we had one around the shop and when I left it became mine. But it works like magic. Well, we've removed the 15 screws from the back panel, so now the uh, cover should be ready to come off the back of the television. Unless I missed any, but I think... Oh, I've got... i got two more screws that I missed. The last two screws come out. And then the back cover should just come off. Like that. I'm getting sloppy. I missed three. So if you're counting, that's 18 screws. The back cover lifts off just like that. So now we see a couple circuit boards inside the set. The one that we're interested in is under the shield cover here. This is the power supply. We know that because of the transformers over here. So what we need to do is we need to remove the shield cover so that we can get at the power supply board and find and replace the defective filter capacitor. So I'm just going to remove the shield cover now and it's held down by looks like one, two, three, uh, it's got a few more screws. But we can actually remove this entire board and work on it out of the set which we're going to need to do to get at the back side of this circuit board anyway to solder the components in place. Okay, now that we've removed the shield from the power supply board, this is the signal board. This is where your uh, your audio video processing takes place and switching. You get your HDMI inputs and component and composite inputs, VGA input, etc., etc., and some more inputs over here. This is the switching and logic board where all the video switching and everything is done. This other little board under the shield here. This is the LCD driver uh, module. 
fact, this is a, it's 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 LDVS low voltage differential signaling board. This is the board that we're interested in. We've got a couple parts to this power supply. We've got the hot section, which is the side that handles your AC coming in, and then you've got your uh, DC to DC converter. Uh, there are two lamp drivers for the uh, fluorescent lamps, as this is a conventional uh, fluorescent backlit LCD uh, panel. These are the two tr the, the two fluorescent ballasts here, and they're associated inverters. We're not too worried about them. What we are worried about is the power supply and the standby power supply, and in particular, these blue capacitors down here. These guys here, and you can actually see, I don't know if they show up on video or not, but the tops are actually bulging on them, which is a pretty good indication that they're popped. Those two guys there are the ones that are going to be causing the problem. We're going to check them all out and replace all the ones that are bad, but uh, generally it's just these two here that cause the no start problem. And we're just going to pull this board out now and get the ESR tester so that we're able to test those uh, components out. So to do that, I'm going to disconnect the circuit board from the from the power supply. So to do that, I just take these little uh, ribbon cables or our, our, our cables that are bunched together here, the plug plug cable. Sorry, we just press the little the release uh, catch on it here, and unplug the circuit unplug the power cables from the circuit board. We're going to do that for all the the power cables because I'm actually going to remove the circuit board itself to work on it. And again, for the power over here, this is the main power, and these are the inverter. Um, outputs for the for the fluorescent lamps and they have two pins on the side here that you squeeze together to release those two. Now everything's all keyed so it's only going to go in one place so you don't have to worry about uh, getting the wrong connectors in the wrong place because they are keyed they only will fit in one particular spot. So now what we need to do and remove the ground wire here now we need to remove the screws marked here with the little screw icon these screws are what holds down this circuit board to the um, the, the bracket here um, or I could just go the easy way and remove the the mounting screws and remove it entirely with the bracket either or we'll do the same thing but we're going to remove this circuit board so that we can sit down and test and replace the failed uh, electrolytic capacitors in the power supply to get this television up and running again as, as inexpensively and quickly as possible okay now that we've got the circuit board removed we can uh, I'm going to turn it over here and we're going to look for the, I'm going to take my ESR meter out, we're going to test these capacitors. I know that they're popped. I'm just going to show you what the readings look like on them because I can feel the tops are raised on these ones. These ones are okay. These are the bad ones here that are causing all the headaches on this set here. And uh, it's usually a good idea to replace them all, but these are the ones that are the, the real culprits. Um, the problem was at the factory is that they, they were rated at 10 volts and they're running um, in the 5 volt range uh, the caps were not really 10 volt capacitors they, they, they factory kind of short changed them at least these other ones are 25 volt rated capacitors so chances are they're, they're not bad and I don't think we're going to need to change them ones because those ones are, are rated high enough voltage they're running on the 12 volt um, and the 12.9 and 13.9 volt rail they're rated at 25 volts but these ones here that on the on the five and a half volt um, uh, rail which is a standby power supply uh, these are the ones that are underrated uh, they should have used at least a 16 or even a 25 volt capacitor on these ones here so that there's sufficient headroom and that's where the problem ran in is that they they fact the factory uh, shipped out uh, capacitors that were too close to their tolerance and I, I doubt that they're even 10 volt they're probably six volt uh, labeled as 10 out of China but um, anyway they're they're running too close to their rated um, voltage and over time they just overheat and uh, um, blow the uh, blow the seal and then once the seal blows um, they dry out and then they no longer function so these are the two bad boys that are going to be causing us trouble on this job and we're going to go in and we're going to test them with the ESR meter just so I can show you what the readings look like and then we're going to replace these put the set back together we'll show you how everything works it's going to work great when I'm done so here are the two capacitors here on the circuit board side as you can see the positives are connected together and those are the negatives um, they're going through a coil and one is on one side of the coil and one is on the other and uh, this is the filter for the standby power supply so in order to measure these things with the ESR tester, we're going to need to disconnect one leg of each of these capacitors so that we can get an accurate reading. And we're going to measure it with this guy. This is an ESR tester. 
And what an ESR tester does is it measures the equivalent series resistance uh, of a capacitor. And it does so by placing a high frequency AC signal into an electrolytic capacitor. And the signal should basically pass through the capacitor with no resistance whatsoever. And if we look at our little chart here, our little chart will tell us what our, our, our worst case for new capacitors are. A 1,000 uh, microfarad capacitor, for example, at 10 volts should have no more than 0 0.12 ohms of uh, ESR, or equivalent series resistance. A 25 volt, which is what we're going to use, should be no worse than 0 0.08, but we're actually going to go higher than that. I'm going to go up to, I'm going to, the, the originals in here are, are um, they are 2,200 microfarad, so we have to kind of judge this somewhere between the 22 and the, and the 4,700 scale. But the, the ohms range is going to be very low. We're going to see ohms range much higher than this when I measure these because these caps are bad. Now, to, in order to use one of these meters, the first thing we got to do is turn it on. And uh, then we need to take the two probes and we need to short the two probes together. And the reason we do that is we have to zero the meter out, which is kind of a challenge when I've got one hand on the camera. But this is telling me that the, the resistance of these leads before I zero it out is 0.12 ohms. Now when I press the zero button, this now goes to zero. So now I've zeroed out the, um, I've zeroed out the leads. So now I can, see, there now we're zeroed out, or pretty close to it. Now I can go about and measure the ESR, the equivalent series resistance of these two capacitors. I'm just going to put the camera back on the tripod so that I can unsolder these, and then we'll measure them and we'll see the results here momentarily. So we're now just going to remove the capacitors and rather than just unsolder one lead, I'm just going to take them both out because I know that these are bad so there's no point in pissing around just um, showing you with it in the circuit. We'll take them out and we'll measure them right out of the circuit. So now my two capacitors are loose, they've been unsoldered, I can just remove them from the, the printed circuit board here. And now we can take our ESR meter, which I remember I already zeroed out. I don't know if you can see it on the screen here or not. It's going to move it into the camera view here so that you can see it. There, you should be able to see it now, I think. Okay. So, for capacitor number one, I'm measuring 4.2 ohms. And this should be no worse than 0.12 or between 0.12 and 0.23. 4.2. Totally shocked. The other one, as well, we measure this one here. This one's measuring, I guess you can see that, 5.6 low ohms. Again, should be no worse than 0.23. These are 10 volt rated capacitors. So I've got my replacements here, and these ones are a little bit bigger because I didn't have an exact size. I didn't have any 2200 microfarad, so you can always go a bit bigger. I'm gonna to go to 3300. Again, same test. Okay, meter's still running. I haven't shot anything off. And here's what a new capacitor looks like. I don't know if you saw that on the screen or not there, but it's 0 0.3. 0 0.3 ohms for that one. It's a nice day today. I got my garage door open. I can hear all the traffic going up and down the street. And the other one is also <coughs> 0 0.3. Now, Here's what they rated at. <clears throat> they should between be between a 0 0.8 and a 0 0.12. And uh, because a, a, a 0 0.08 is a uh, is a 1000, but this is a 3300 and a 0 0.47 is a 0 0.12. So as you can see, we are 0 0.06. So it's even better than a 1000 and a heck of a lot better than a 4700. These are really good um high high temperature uh, power supply rated capacitors that we are going to replace so we can turn the low ohms meter off now and put it away because its job is done now we just have to take the components and thread them through the holes on the circuit board paying attention to the polarity the negative is listed by the side here with the with the uh, the minus on it obviously so we're just going to thread in the uh, the two components here And this one's a little taller than the other, so I've got to kind of bend other parts out of the way to get it to fit. But it, it fit it well. It's below, it'll fit in below the cage. So now we're just going to turn the board over. 
and we're going to solder these components back into the uh, into the circuit. Get my lead free because uh, everything else crashes down off my bench. My my normal bench has got a TV on it. I I was fortunate a few weeks ago. Somebody gave me a um, somebody gave me a Bravia. They said, "Here, take it." I don't want it. Nice 46 inch Bravia TV, and uh, there really wasn't anything wrong with it. All that was wrong with it is that the the dummy had turned the speakers off in the menu and, and didn't realize that, and they gave it away, and there was nothing wrong with it. So, <clears throat> needless to say, I, I'm using that TV myself, and my my uh, old one, which is a 43 inch uh, Samsung DLP, is now sitting in my work sitting on my workbench just taking up space because uh, I haven't found a place to put it yet but uh, that's beside the fact so I'm kind of working in a cluttered garage here anyway we've soldered the components in place and uh, now we're just going to trim the uh, the leads down here And now, we're ready to uh, flip the board over and place the circuit board back in place. Just get the connectors out of the way here. The board will sit into its, into its uh, there's a little tray here that it sits in. So we to make sure that none of our connectors are trapped below the board before we start fastening things down. So we've got all of our connectors out here. Uh, one is missing, there's one. There it is, okay, all of our connectors out. So now we can proceed to Put the six screws back in to hold the power supply in place and then redo the connectors and uh, then we can put the back on it and we'll turn it around and I'll fire it up and I'll show you how great it looks. And just for you guys to know my background um, was I was, a, I was a, a television technician. I spent 20 years in the service uh, field. So I do know what I'm doing. I'm not just some hack that's uh, trying to teach you how to fix your TV. Um, I'm showing you this because I'm sharing my knowledge. I'm no longer in the um, electronic service industry, but I still keep a hand in it as I have everybody in my community that remembers me from my repair days when I ran the uh, I ran the only service department in town. I did ran the service department portion of a of a, a, a shop that was around for many many years. So I have a lot of people in the community that remember me from my days of in the repair business, and I get people coming to me on a regular basis wanting me to fix their TV because, uh, or not just their TV, but electronics in general, because there's nobody else around that does it. All the shops around here have of all closer doors and everything's become kind of a disposable um, product and there's still people around that you know don't mind spending a little bit of dollars and I certainly don't make a lot of money doing it but I do it more for the enjoyment just to try and keep a hand in electronics and you know some of these things are not repairable there's a lot of them that uh, you know there's a lot of them that uh, quite frankly are not worth repairing you have a panel or something that goes bad you're not going to spend any money on it but in the case of this these are uh, relatively straightforward so I'm just going to put the cover on here put the back on the TV and then we will test it we've got the back on the set we've got it set up and we've got it uh, connected to uh, my in-house test cable so now we're going to take the remote control and this is a TV that wasn't turning on before this is the first power up so we'll see how long it takes. It should fire up within about five to seven seconds, I think. So hit the power button. Click. There you go. And there we go. This is just off air reception from my uh, in house converter boxes. So this is not a high definition picture. This is just coming in through my, my off air uh, in house system but uh... thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed uh, my videos on how to repair some of your consumer electronics uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button 
And uh, stay tuned. We're going to have some more interesting and, and informative videos real soon. Bye for now.